mom told me this you need to have blinders on no pain no gain you need to assign a value to yourself you can't have other people say ha nahi ye 20 rupees ye 15 rupees you need to say ke main sona hu bhai hira hu main like you have to do that for yourself mama used to say it to me every time i'd like like go into her room and steal her lipsticks and like my pockets would be full she be like show your pockets i'd be like no mama i'd say na kada ka so it's like like a chalu person basically Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. Um as you can see this session is called disruptive stardom because tonight I'm in conversation with one of Hindi cinema's most exciting young actors. Um I'm an admirer. Please put your hands together for Janvi Kapoor. <laughs> First of all the heels. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's commitment to the look. <laughs> it absolutely is. So Janvi, do you have you realized that this year is your fifth year in the movies? I hate it every time someone reminds me because I feel like I genuinely like everyone else professionally also feel like I've lost 2 years in the pandemic and then I feel like with the blink of an eye I'm suddenly 26 and I've had not as many theatricals as i would have wanted to so it's it's like a daunting fact to deal with but yeah i guess it is what it is <laughs> so you know what fascinates me about your filmography is the fact that you have consistently picked films which need you to do heavy lifting in terms of performance uh even films like good luck jerry or millie where so much of your work was with a rat right <laughs> <laughs> why why is that what you instinctively drawn to you know mama i was reflecting on this very observation quite recently because i know i've spoken about this a lot of people have asked me this question and it's always been about how uh fresh off of dharak i took very seriously this critique of um i feel like there was a section of the audiences that felt a little let down specifically i think moms die hard fans um and i just took it upon myself to prove to people that i am worthy of this opportunity that so many people thought that i got easily and i guess i did get easily and you know a lot of people have told me that I, there's this personality trait where i feel the need to subject myself to some amount of like Don't just uh, yeah to um, well, to convince myself that I deserve to be where I am and so I did not and I hope this doesn't sound arrogant but I feel it would have been the easier route for me to pick the sort to pick a certain kind of roles where I would have gotten the reach I would have gotten the eyeballs I would have looked glamorous I would have quintessentially um reached becoming a star easily I had a lot of box office successes but I just I think when I thought liya tha ki mujhe साबित करना है कि मैं एक्टिंग कर सकती हूँ खुद को लोगों को एंड दैट वॉज वन आई वॉज डीपली पैशनेट अबाउट सो आई फील लाइक माई इंटायर फोकस शिफ्टेड टू ट्राइंग टू गेट माई सेल्फ आउट ऑफ दिस बॉक्स दैट पीपल हैड पुट मी एन सो अन लेस इट वॉज अ चैलेंज इट डेंट एक्साइट मी एंड एंड या इफ इट फेल्ट ईजी एंड कन्वीनियंट आई वॉज लाइक स्केर्ड ऑफ इट इफ इट वॉज डॉन्टिंग एंड अनएक्सपेक्टेड आई फेल लाइक ओके इफ इट वॉज अन शार्ट अ टेरिटरी आई फेल लाइक आई नीड इट टू गो दर and uh, and yeah i feel like after the harak i could have easily focused on the numbers that it did and continued on that trajectory but i felt like i had more to bring to the table in terms of my acting and i wouldn't rest until i proved that for myself and i think but but now janvi there is the film with junior and dia yes <laughs> devara devra yeah devra yeah which which i hear is this big sort of commercial mass film yeah uh, what can you tell us about it 
that it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I'm having a blast. I think finally I've gotten to a point where after doing these films where I'm dying in a freezer, um, dislocating my shoulders or like acting with a rat, I finally feel like I'm allowing myself to do what comes naturally to me, which is like that natak, notanki, like dialogue bazi, dancing and just like having fun and doing the kind of roles that I've grown up enjoying and loving and um, I'm finally getting the chance to do that specifically on this film. And uh, yeah, it's a blast. I'm, I think I'm going a little easier on myself and allowing myself to enjoy it, which it, it feels good. And I, I, I think this is the perfect film to be able to do that. But you said that um, you've got some credibility as an actor, but you don't have a blockbuster. So is this also that short? I guess so. I mean, Every film you do, you want it to do well, but I don't know if I approached it with like, ye, ye mera blockbuster help me ye karungi. I think it was so much to do with the excitement of I've been wanting to do a South film for really long. Um, it honestly feels like a homecoming in 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 um, in many ways, in ways that I really didn't expect it to be. Um, being on that set, hearing that language. Uh, have you know being around that flavor of cinema it somehow makes me feel closer to mom as well which is quite ironic because I know when she came to uh when she started doing Hindi films and I know I'm digressing from the question but um she didn't know the language so well and so they used to call her parrot they used to say that hum dialogue denge, aap lo, and then just say it and she was very good at that and she felt kind of alien in this environment. And I feel like I'm going into Telugu cinema. I don't know the language too well at all, actually. I'm more phonetically familiar with Tamil. Um, and I'm rattling the dialogues. And Randy, so my DOP, calls me tape recorder. He <laughs> says, you press the button, you go da 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 So I feel like I'm kind of understanding in a weird juxtaposition. What I, she did. What she did. Yeah. And, and it just feels like home. It just, I feel like... Even before my film, I feel like they've accepted me with open arms and so much love and eagerness. It just feels, everyone on set as well, it just feels like a big, warm hug. <laughs> I don't know how and, and you, it. so when you mug dialogue, uh, how do you know where to hit the emotion, where the beats are, where the pauses are? So I have been a little phonetically familiar, like I said, with Tamil and Telugu, more with Tamil. I've watched a lot of films and you know, while being on set, I didn't realize how much I retained from um, uh, being around mom and her relatives. Like sometimes I won't even, like I wouldn't plan on improvising, but like something will, nah, and I didn't even realize that I knew this word, but it would just come out. And what does it mean? It means like, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, there isn't a literal translation. But right. Mama used to say it to me every time I'd like, like, go into her room and steal her lipsticks. And like, my pockets would be full. She'd be like, show your pockets. I'd be like, no, Mama. And she's like, nah, kora ka. So it's like, like a chalu person, basically. <laughs> and I didn't, there was no, I didn't like retain this consciously. But we were doing some scene and it was a non talky scene. And something, something I improvised and I just said, nah, kora ka. and he was like, but I thought you didn't know the language. I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. So it's just seeing you. I guess so. I guess so. And, um, you know, Chaitanya ma'am, who's I think the chief AD on our film and even Kotala sir, they're very helpful. Like they explain to you the meaning of each word. And I guess I underestimated how, how much it feels like it's in my blood, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But it is. I would hope so, yeah. It feels <laughs> like it is. You know, you, you just talked about a scene where there wasn't much talking and, and you've spoken about how you actually prefer those scenes. Yeah. Where there's more silence. Why? I think they're more exciting. I also think for me personally as an actor, I wouldn't say one of my handicaps, but one aspect of of my acting that I think I needed to work on is my dialogue and diction. Like it's one thing that I would have to think about a little bit initially. And so I was just more confident in silent moments. I also, um, 
I also feel like in film, uh, writers, directors, I think they feel the need sometimes to spoon feed their audiences and underline certain emotions with dialogues. And I find that in life, in situations, um, more often than not, you don't use as many words. So it seems like the more natural thing to do is just play on silences and really have an intimate, private moment with the camera. I think that feels, uh, it feels like you can have a moment for the first time in front of the camera, which always feels very special. Mm. And that happens more with me when there isn't. There isn't too much to say. Yeah, I love those moments. Like, for example, how many of y'all have seen La La Land? So you know that last moment between um, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, and it plays just on their close-ups. There's yeah. no dialogue, but yeah. it's so it's so potent. There's that one scene in The Godfather where um, where Michael realizes that Fredo betrayed him, and it's just it's just his face. There's no words. Yeah. He's not underlining it. Fuck my brother, but nothing. Yeah. But it's there. Yeah. yeah, and I find those to be the most riveting moments in cinema. Do you, um, Janvi, on days that you're not acting, uh, is there like a consistent riaz? Do you have to keep up with the acting or is it just like you'll do workshops and stuff when you're going into a project? I think the character-driven workshops when um, you're preparing for a film, but I find that if I'm not exploring some sort of creative form of expression, even when I'm not working, I feel like that day is like a wasted day. I'm just not happy. I need to either paint, I need to do my dance, I need to read a book, I need to watch films. I feel like if you don't exercise those muscles in your brain, in your emotional core, even if it's something as simple, ma'am, as like talking to someone and having a very real conversation who comes from a very different social, economical and cultural background from you. I just think that you need to be um, just open to people and things, which is very hard when, um, I guess when you're famous, for the lack of a better word, but y you need to keep uh, expanding your horizon creatively. You're but a painter? Just, yeah, I enjoy painting. And does anybody get to see these paintings or it's just for yourself? Uh, my, I, I think I posted one picture a really long time ago during the lockdown, but I was awful. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, my sister, my dad, I gifted a painting to Anshila Didi. Um, I don't know if she like put it up as an obligation or actually liked putting it up, but yeah, I do enjoy painting quite a bit. And how do these different areas of creativity sort of inform what you do in front of the camera? Is it completely subconscious, You, but you know that if I read, if I paint, if I have this conversation with someone, some way it'll make its way into what I do in front of the camera? I think there are a couple of aspects to that. I think A for me, painting, dancing, they're all very meditative. So they allow you to be one with yourself, with your breath. Um, also, I think just being a student humbles you because you need to constantly remind yourself that there is a lot to learn, there is a lot to see. And um, so many things like dance teaches you rhythm, which I think helps you in comic timing. It helps you in body language. Uh, I think painting objectively, like for me, the attention to detail shows you how like tiny, tiny strokes affect like the bigger picture. Yeah. So I guess the metaphorical lessons and everything. Um, I think reading, just to understand your history, your culture, where you come from, how different people from different walks of life, how they express, how they write. I think poetry is a wonderful form of just, again, understanding rhythm, understanding emotion. So all of these things help. You know, you also talked about the film that you're doing with Sharan Sharma, Ulanj. And you said- No, 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 I'm doing Mr. and Mrs. Mahim. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Mahim with him, but you said that you're co-creating the character. Right. Now, how does that process, how is it different from when you get the script and your characters on paper? Is this, in a sense, more exciting? It's more empowering, for sure. I think it gives you a lot more agency as an actor. Um, I think 
Mr. and Mrs. Mahi as well as Ulaj in different ways, I think when you see it, more, or it's more apparent in Ulaj, they're slightly like, I wouldn't say autobiographical, but like there are aspects to both those characters that are very uh, like taken, direct, I wouldn't say directly from my life, but like situations that have happened in my life. So when it comes- So you told them that this happened and they put it into the script? So for Mr. and Mrs. Mahi, for example, initially I wasn't in the film. Um, me and Sharan were just, you know, very close friends because of Gunjan and he told me about the story and and I would keep, tell, and he'd keep discussing scenes with me and I'd be, I'd keep telling him anecdotes from my personal life and how things have played out. And then we'd like make alterations to, I guess, dialogues or character arcs and stuff like that. and. My character in Mahi, I think is very unique because there's so many strong female characters, but I think one thing I found in common with all of them is that they're all very ambitious, very headstrong. They have it all figured out. No one can mess with them. They have all of this agency. They're fully empowered and that's great. That's very uh, morally and socially aspirational. But I know three, four years ago, I was in that person. Okay. Even though I'm coming from, you know, the social and cultural and economic background that I am, and I know so many women don't even know the meaning of agency. Yeah. And so I think that's, I, I feel like I've seen two extremes in female characters in Indian cinema. Either you're very docile, vulnerable, lack complete agency, or you're like the complete opposite. You're the boss lady. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, what about a woman who who is finding her agency? What about making that transition? Because I know I went through that transition in these last couple of years. And I think that's what excited me the most about Mahi, that, you know, there's such a lack of awareness of even knowing that there's a thing called agency. You don't even know that you have the, like, I didn't, obedience is encouraged so much in, in female, like, I remember mom telling me a story as a kid. She said that, you know, I was so obedient. Um, my mom uh, was drying the clothes and she left me on the parapet like the this thing on bordering my neighbor's house and my house. There was like a partition. Mm. And she left me in and she ran in to run some errands and she forgot I was there. And I just kept waiting and I just kept waiting and I just kept waiting for a couple of hours. That's how obedient I was. So that was obviously like, you should be obedient. Yeah. And that's encouraged so much all the time. But mm. I think lessons like that are rewarded so much that you don't realize there's such a thing like agency. And I feel like that was my journey and that's the journey that I identified with in Mr. and Mrs. Mahi. So how did you discover this idea of agency? When did it happen? I think through my professional life, I didn't even... Ma'am, I've been very... <laughs> it's strange to say because I feel like anything and everything I say, given the context of where I come from, sounds like, oh my God, I'm like rich and famous and life sucks. but. <laughs> But um, <laughs> so I'm a little conscious. Um, but I've I've been a little apologetic about I guess where I come from because there are bigger and tougher things that people deal with. Of course. And and so I've just always everything that I've dealt with in life I've always kind of looked at it as it doesn't really matter. Like look at like what people actually go through. Like this is fine. This is fine. And I think I. I think I invalidated a lot of what I was feeling and that resulted in me not really having a voice to express what I want, what I don't want because I never wanted to seem imposing. Mm. Like I didn't even know I had the right to uh, speak about like deep fakes or altered images. Like I, I didn't know I, I could say anything as an actress about it and I, I I honestly, I applaud Rashmika for standing up um, because it's not cool. Yeah. I remember I saw, I think, altered images of me when I was 15. And I was kind of like, okay, you know, I'm a public person. And then when I became an actress- This is part of the game. Yeah, it's part of the game. And then when I, then even now, every day if you're getting tagged in something and news portals are carrying it, trying to sell it like actual images of you, and this happened and I was like, you know, I can't complain. It's just going to sound like I'm asking for attention. So I shouldn't say anything, which is again, such a sad thing mm. for me to think like now that I 
think back that this is what I was thinking, I feel kind of upset and sad about it. But you learn on the go. You yeah. just And are you more confident now to speak your mind? Yeah, I am. Honestly, working with directors like Sharan and even Sudhanshu and even Atesha and, and um, I think when they not seek out what you think on something, but when you give your, when, yeah, when they ask you what you think of something and they take into consideration your views, I think that makes you feel like, okay, maybe I'm not an idiot and maybe like I have something to say and people will hear what I have to say. And even if it is stupid, at least I should put it across because I'm well within my rights to do that. I think understanding that was my journey. But you know, last year, I remember you were on the film companion actors and, uh, and I remember this very clearly when you talked in what I thought was a very smart way about being both an actor and an influencer yeah. and never, you know, being confused about what either one means. And, and you said that it, it finally, you know, uh, I might have whatever, 22 million people on Instagram, but if all those people had come to see Millie, it would have been a hit. It would have been Bahubali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the fact that you have clarity yeah. on that, I, I think is, is amazing. And you said, you said that the social media is for brands, it's for likes, it's for vanity. Does this aspect which is, it's also a job now, right? Yeah. To, to feed the 22 million plus is also a whole ongoing thing. Yeah. Does that ever distract you from what your real job is? No, me personally, I don't think so. Never. Because I, I think that that comes very secondary to my job. Like I would personally be very happy. Um, I mean, that's great for like paying the bills. but. <laughs> But I would be very happy just sticking to my primary job, which is being in front of the camera and doing everything I can to be in front of the camera. However, I will say this. Um, I think I underestimated the weapon that social media can be in creating a perception. Like I didn't realize how, uh, so I'm sure you know what Ormax is. I'm yeah, yeah, of course. Even, no, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say this. So they did like an analysis on one of my films. Omax Media is a research firm for the entertainment business. So they said that, okay, you know, Janvi is great in X film. She's so good. She's better than we expected her to be. But on social media, she's so different. Wo aise hot, hot pictures dalti hai, yaha aise dekhne mein thoda matab confused feel ho hai. And I didn't realize, I thought that like, it's all fun and games and I can like do a get ready with me video and, and it won't really affect the fact that I'm playing Gunjan Saxena or Millie from a small town. But I think it does create a certain perception. I think that I don't think I'm equipped to calculate these things. So I've started maybe taking it, not seriously, but taking it into consideration because if anything's going to come in the way of my work, my primary work, yeah. then um, it's not worth it. Yeah, because we did talk about this, you know, that yeah. the, the, the kind of roles you do in the movies is, is very different from the persona that is on social media. On social media. Yeah. And so now you're saying that you see that that might be a contradiction which impacts on the work? Of course, like I think, um, I think that it, it makes you, like uh, what's his name, what's that? Kevin Spacey said that if you, the less that people know about you, the personality, the easier it is for them to believe the characters you play on screen. Yeah. I didn't have that luxury. Everyone's always known everything about me. Um, but so now if I can do something to make my characters more easily acceptable, then why, why will I create an obstacle for myself just because yeah. I want to like post pictures of my new haircut on Instagram? <laughs> well, but as you said, it's also the brands, yeah. uh, which so, so I have to ask, what is, what is your relationship with money? Do you handle your own negotiations, payments? No. <laughs> so my negotiations for sure, no. Uh, my... Uh, the legendary producer genes have not rubbed off on you? No, the only way it's rubbed off on me is that I love calculating like 
first day numbers and lifetime predictions like this whole animal and um sam bahadur clashing is exciting me and like i'm going to watch animal today and i'm like wondering what the numbers are going to be so so you you're interested in that yeah 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 fully i remember i used to go to dharma every day and i had like my group of friends um and like i'd make a chart on one of the whiteboards and i'd write like film names and i'd write first day prediction and lifetime prediction and i'd make all of them write it and um and then we'd see who would win and i'd win a lot you got at this yeah i'm good at this but this was pre pandemic post pandemic i don't know what like i have no idea what is going on <laughs> <laughs> so all the calculations are off yeah i have to like rethink my analysis a bit <laughs> <laughs> you can do this for your own films as well Yeah, but you know, then I get a little hopeful, like a little too hopeful. I think. Yeah, yeah I start like taking manat and like going to the temple, and so I feel like some divine intervention will happen, and I will end up making a bahu bali. But it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you are one of those people who's doing the spiritual things before a release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you should ask me where I'm going day after. <laughs> Pray tell <laughs> Ujjain. I'm very excited. I've never been. Yeah, but this is not for release. This is just for life. It's also for Kushi's movie release. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You know, uh, Guillermo del Toro said that success and failure live next door to each other, and there's no number on the door. You just have to knock. That's scary. It is scary, yeah. But it's also what's magical about the movie business, right? It is, and and a lesson that I think I hold very close to me, that again I learned from mom and dad. They said that you can't, nothing is permanent. Not failure, not success, and it's and both of these things are as important as the importance that you give it, mm-hmm. and you need you need to be neutral in the face of both things, which is how you remain a consistent and a true artist. Absolutely, but. That's easier said than done, right? I guess so. I don't know. I I don't know, ma'am. Like I feel like there are enough people around you that will make you feel like you're on top of the world, even with doing nothing. Especially in this day and age of social media, there are enough people to build you up. There are enough people to rip you down. You need to. I was having this conversation with Kushi because she's like quite nervous about her first film coming out, and I said that you can't. and this is a mistake i made i think post thadak um i kept thinking that you know the film's going to come out the trailer's going to come out and people are going to be like oh my god wow she's arrived and like this and that i kept waiting for external validation and for them to assign a value to me or tell me what what i'm worth mm-hmm. but like you need to tell people what you you need to show people what you're worth you can't you need to assign a value to yourself you can't have other people say ha nahi 20 rupees ye 15 rupees you need to say ke main sona hu bhai hira hu like you have to do that for yourself otherwise you'll just be lost which is i think what happened to me like i instead of focusing on the numbers that my first film did which i think was the highest for any debutant till then and even since i focused on i guess it was also the validation that i think i was seeking from my mom that i um started seeking from the audiences and so then when there was all of this rhetoric about whether i've lived up to her or whether i haven't i just became overwhelmed and i just only focused on that and i only i was like is this the value that i assigned to myself and then every choice henceforth became about i need to put myself through the grind and i need to prove that i can act and i just like I didn't look at the positive only. Hmm. So that shift is happening for me now where I've realized that I need to value what I'm bringing to the table and it's only then that other people will start valuing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's important to kind of figure this out early on. Yeah. Because if if your um inner being gets attached to success, yeah, then it's over. it's over yeah. especially as an artist like if you want to be an influencer go ahead like look sure. at the numbers look at like the statistics get happy with the number of likes but i mean i suspect that even that is a very kukla um, yeah outflow. it's hollow absolutely yeah absolutely but but still chandi when you have you over these 5 years also learned to kind of make peace with the destiny of your films yeah. right I, i mean i imagine something like bawal 
took a lot of work from your end, yeah. right? That was a tough performance. Eventually, it ends up on a streaming platform, creates controversy. Are you able to now kind of have distance from whatever happens to a movie? Now, yes, but in the moment, I was quite... Uh, I think I also pinned a lot onto Bawal. Like, I remember I fought for my days to be able to do that film. I was in the middle of shooting Mahi and that film was anyways delayed a lot because I'd gotten injured. And so I really had to fight to be able to do Bawal. And for me, I was like, okay, this is my moment. I'm getting to perform. It's Nitesh Tiwari, it's Sajid Sir, it's Varun. And it's not like, I'm not just like dancing and giggling. I, I'm getting to do something and I'm so fond of history. So I literally put all of my eggs in that basket. And the first jhatka was, okay, it's turned out to be the kind of film that the makers are feeling like should be on an OTT platform, which was like a big blow yeah. to me because I was looking for, of course, validation, but also numbers from that film. And then the second blow was also because I spent so much time looking at, have you ever seen that photo of uh, that dress? where some people think it's blue and black, yes. black and some people think it's gold yes. and white. Yeah. And so the people that think it's blue and black can never really see gold Correct. and white. Yeah. So I only saw the intention behind the film, which was, which was, you know, all of these people have gone through so much in the light of that our problems are nothing. Yeah. So I could only see every scene and every instance through that light. And I really believe um, the purity of intention behind uh, in Nitesh and behind and his reason behind making that film. So, so hearing all of these other views was like, okay, I can't, like it was a full paradigm shift for me. And yeah, I did take took a, a moment, while. but I'm very well versed in this world of uh, getting <laughs> hate. I don't know, <laughs> not hate, but like, like Dharak was also met with a decent amount of resistance. But then again, like, I have a feeling I'm going to look at Bawal a year from now, two years from now and realize that a lot of people did see it and a lot of people did like it and I'd rather focus on that in a way that doesn't make me delusional because that would be horrible and I think that's the most scary and happens too often in our industry. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Delusion, delusion is, a big, is a big one. You know, I don't know if you've seen Luck by Chance but... Uh, uh, you know, Zoya's film, yeah. right? Uh, in that, there's this lovely scene where Shah Rukh is playing himself and he's talking to Farhan, who's this newbie actor, and he says, stardom is a cocktail, fame, money, power, bohut khatarnaak nasha hai. How do you save yourself from the khatarnaak nasha? I've seen it from my childhood. So it's not khatarnaak? No, I mean, I'm immune, ho gayi, Thoda, I don't know, like... Uh, I don't know, um, I, I, I don't know any different, like I, I don't know any different. I've seen it through mom and dad and I think I've seen, what I've seen through her was a level and magnitude that I don't think many people were even privy to. Yeah. Uh, so I think my journey in itself has been very like unique. I think that everyone's journey is unique. Everyone's struggles are unique. But I think there are always aspects and characteristics that make it relatable, that make audiences go, huh, like this thing that she went through, I know what it was like. like but I don't think I have any aspect of my life that was like that, right from being the daughter of, you know, a legend. And then from debuting at a time where social media was booming. Um, then from having to deal with her loss at the timing that I did, the way that I had to. Then from also witnessing what that kind of attention does to a family, does to her, does to it. I don't know, it, it was my normal, but objectively it's quite abnormal, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think having these experiences made stardom, fame, all of that feel like very, uh, I don't know. No, it never swept you in any way. It never swept me because I can't, like, my struggle and journey has not been to, like, I want to get noticed or I hope I get famous, which, or, like, 
or even of money like i hope like i need to which is the struggle and journey of 99% of this country yeah. which are much bigger struggles than the ones that i've had i need to respect and recognize that and i can't pretend like those were my that was my journey it's not but having said that now it, it doesn't seem like such a uh like an aspirational thing for me because i don't know it's familiar i guess yeah. i i don't know it sounds horrible but like no but it is true it's true i guess so what drives you just my love for movies my love for movies it at a time when i felt like there was nothing it honestly for the lack of a better word, it kept me alive it's what i live for it's what i live eat breathe think of every second of the day just my love for films for performing for being in front of the camera that is the only time when i'm at peace i am a wreck when i'm not shooting i am not a pleasant mean? person to be around i just need to i don't know if it's about escaping into a character i don't know if it's about like the fact that an actor or a story or cinema has the power to move you to resonate with you to stay with you to influence i think politics whether it's social or uh, or even with propaganda or just i don't know i think the power that it has to move you is i think the ultimate thing especially for me i feel i think there's also to be honest a uh, i guess a drive that I will not abandon my mom's legacy. Like I can't. I don't want to. I need to take it forward. I will die trying. It means the most to me. Like the most. I need to work day and night tirelessly so that I justify a the fact that I definitely got this opportunity easily. And I feel like maybe I've taken somebody's spot. Mm. So it is only right for me out of respect to do every to overcompensate to justify this. A that B that I'm just obsessed with movies with acting. It's all I've ever known. Every mm. family discussion, every holiday, every like moment I've spent with my parents, everything has been movies. My education has been through movies, and see they've given all of y'all. The audiences have given my parents, my family, so much love and acceptance. My whole livelihood is based on that. The least I can do is give my entire being. and devoted to this craft i genuinely feel like that and i feel like if people say ke ye privilege ye fame ye sab virasat mein mili hai to matlab khoon to maa baap ka hi hai na to phir mehnat this devotion to cinema this love for cinema wo bhi khoon mein hai yeah so i can't like it's like it's there i don't know i'll die trying <laughs> tell me why Did you say once that I will either marry an Italian or a South Indian? <laughs> Why doesn't anyone else stand a chance? I think now, now I'm, um, I've like gone away from both things. The, 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 the palette has expanded. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just felt like I saw a Godfather, and I was obsessed with how, like, you know, that line: "A man who doesn't spend time with his family isn't a real man at all." I think Marlon Brando says this. <laughs> Um, I was like, "Wow, this is the kind of man I want," and <laughs> and um, I just had this image of me uh, with like my husband wearing a veshti and me putting like coconut oil on his head and then giving him a champi and like wearing like gajra and my patu pavda. I I don't know. I just felt like just I'm at peace when I'm climbing Tirupati or I'm in front of the camera. There are like every other moment you find me, I'm always like. <laughs> always my team like i've just had a conversation with my manager and she's like i think you might need help because it's not normal <laughs> what the, what is the uh the what is the frantic nature about like what are you being frantic about when you're not either at tirupati or in a, on a shoot i i like escaping into the characters that i'm playing i think and so i guess that's what it comes down to i'm i think i'm trying to escape something um i guess something that i haven't dealt with personally but i don't know i think wo jo life ka maqsad abhi mil gaya wo acting karna hi hai to agar main acting nahi kar rahi hu to kya kar rahi hu then i'm only preparing myself every day to be as good as i can be when i'm acting so 
everything is now and and mom told me this you need to have blinders on no pain no gain so i wake up every day and this is like in my head so i i don't know i'm not sounding like healthy or stable right <laughs> i don't know i'm okay i think <laughs> <laughs> one one last question before we open it up to the audience you know i was watching this hollywood reporters round table and and um, the anchor asked that uh, it was it was just female actors and uh, she asked them that what do you watch to decompress how do you decompress and it turns out that all these women you know jennifer lawrence all these oscar winners they started talking about how they actually watch reality shows <laughs> so they're watching love is blind or temptation i don't know some version of that yeah. okay because they said you can just have fun and not have to think and i thought that was just it was so lovely because they just all felt human yeah right what do you do to decompress i paint So that's the decompression. I paint or I dance or I travel or But I... that's all connected to the art, no? But there is nothing there which is completely not informing that. Uh I go on this website called farfetch.com <laughs> and Did I... Karan introduce you to it? No. I knew about it from before. Arjun bhai I think introduced me but I never have the guts to um press check Bye. out. I just and there are currently a hundred and thirteen things in my cart. I have not had the guts to buy anything, but I just keep adding every day. Yeah. So and I keep putting like weird things on my face. Like I, I I don't know if you can see. There's like a dana here in my eye. I don't know. I woke up one day and I was like, you know, they say having ghee is very healthy. So I said, अच्छा तो चेहरे पे डालूँगी तो पता नहीं कुछ अलग ही glow आ जाएगा. Bad idea. So I start putting ghee on my. under my eyes for some reason <laughs> and then i'm gotten this like dana thing like a white head and i called up my doctor and and he was like you know i think it's some oil clogged in your pores are you using some new products is no but i'm putting ghee on my face could have anything to do with that and he said you're an idiot <laughs> hang up and don't do that <laughs> so weird things like that <laughs> so it's far fetch and it's putting stuff on your face yeah but also reading i'm not like yeah i think Yeah. I love it. And I I have to ask why you don't ever check out. No, I don't know the guts. It's just too much money. Yeah, I think if DC gets me two three more events maybe I'll press check out but not now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that happy note, uh, uh who has questions? Uh Janvi we see you on social media and we all know that you are a very good friend of Ori. <laughs> Are you going to ask me who Ori is? Oh God! Ori is going to have a field day that you have asked me this. What um, is the question? Who is Ori? No. What does he do? What does he do? What does he not do? He is doing everything. Anything. We just want you to say something. He is a liver. He is a liver. He is a moment, I think, and he is doing it all. I think like sky is the limit. वो कुछ भी कर सकता है. सब कुछ कर रहा है. और आपके साथ डांस कर रहे हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी जस्ट नेम विल यू डिरेक्ट बिकॉज आई कैन बेली सी वन मैप इज अ माइक वी हैंड Hi. Good evening. Uh, welcome to our college. We study here, and we're really excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. We stayed back after our exams. So, yeah. I hope your exam went well. well. Yes, it did. For both of us. Sorry. <laughs> She said no. <laughs> um. So you mentioned how you had a journey of self worth, and you discovered yourself over a period of time, and what you really feel about yourself. So, do you think during this journey? your approach to acting changed from how you did it initially and how you did it now because um you bring yourself entirely to the set so what's going on here does kind of reflect uh what you what in what you're putting into the craft and um there has to be some connect and sometimes not feeling the best of yourself mentally but you still have to bring yourself to the table to do the best so is there an approach that differs because i think that for me it's always been about whatever you're feeling personally like i said to anupama ma'am earlier it was about escaping all of that and coming to set so i would always feel my best on set 
I would always feel, um, even if not my most confident, I would always feel my most at peace, my most like driven. Um, so the set was always a very safe space for me. And I think I've been fortunate enough to work with directors that have always made me feel like my presence, my feedback, my uh, abilities and skill set have been, were, were valued on set. Um, and so, of course, that constant reassurance made me more and more confident, but I would always escape into my characters and my films, so that was always a very safe space for me. And even whenever I was dealing with emotionally, I would find it extremely cathartic to uh, channel it through my char character. And I always feel like having a moment of truth for the first time ever between you and the character is very personal and very special. And so I felt like everything that I'm dealing with and everything that I'm feeling, if I can use it for my character, then it means something. Like it's better than sitting at home and crying and overthinking and being confused. So I'm specifically proud of those moments that I've had with my characters on film where I can identify that I know I was feeling this and I know I used this and then I felt lighter and better after. Thank you so much. We've all been through our journeys of self doubt and you know, hearing you talk about it just does have that sense of relatability with us as well. So yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ved, uh, I'm 16, and thank you for having it so close to my college. I just printed all the way from here. <laughs> um, so firstly, I'd just like to say, um, as an aspiring FC intern one day, uh, firstly, Anupama, ma'am, you've been such an amazing inspiration to oh, everyone who's like trying to get to everything. And it's giving me the heebie-jeebie just talking to you right now. It's like crazy. Um, Secondly, uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, is there any particular performance um, from India or from abroad that this year, since you've been like creating characters right now, are they informing, what uh, performances are informing your future character right now? What performances are... Um... So this isn't a new film, but I recently re-watched A Woman Under the Influence. And I think that... Uh, off late, whenever I've seen performances and films, I can I can kind of not gauge, but I know the emotional space and graph that the actor, the director is going for. I know maybe um, the skill set or the technical approach an actor could have adapted to portray a certain emotion or a certain uh, uh, like a certain choice that they've made. I can kind of decipher it, but with a woman under the influence. I don't know if y'all have seen that film. Anupama, mm -hmm. have you seen it? Mm -hmm. There is such chaos and spontaneity, but like raw honesty in that woman's performance that there is no math to anything. And it is still, I wouldn't even say measured because there's so much abandonment. I just, that, that was something that I couldn't crack or fathom, and I think that inspired me. I think that was another level of genius. And I um, I recently watched mom's film, Shanak Shanam, and uh, I, I thought she was spectacular in it. I, I've actually just started watching her movies. Her movies. I mean, it, it was, I think, a little tough for me to watch her films, and yeah. I think, I think now I'm able to look at it as an actor and, you know, her work objectively, objectively actor to actor, like analyzing a performance. I think before it was too tough. And and just to see what she's done, I just, it's it's a different kind of pride. So yeah, I think it's, it's giving me a sense of um, the kind of actor I want to be, where you make things larger than life. You're unafraid to be big. You're unapologetic about what you're feeling, but it's always grounded in reality. Kind of like Vivian Lee in her performance. It's always big and theatrical and larger than life, but there's always honesty and truth to it. I think that's the kind of school of acting I want to aspire to shift to now. Thank you. What are the other films that you're seeing? Uh, Jagadiga Viridu Ati Loka Sundari. Shanakshanam, I saw Chalbaz, I saw Chandni. Um, 
Mr. India, Rupi Rani. So uh, before I left for my Devra outdoor, I saw all of these films. You know, I've told you this before, but I've had the privilege of actually seeing her act on, on the set, set of Chandni. Yeah, you don't. Because know. my mom wrote that film, right? Mm. So I was actually on the sets of Chandni, and just her transformation yeah. was incredible. Yeah. You know, incredible. She would be sitting and, like, you know, very quiet, yeah. not mixing. And then suddenly, like, yeah, sparkle. Yeah, it was I, stunning. Yeah, I think it was also. She's very smart about how she wanted to conserve her energy. Yeah. And she was always observing. So her, she had like a chip. I think she would just like store things. And do she you do that? I mean, my khud ke baare mein thodi na bolsi. Yeah, I, I think I, I. You store things too. Yeah, and I think more and more I. I I feel the need to conserve mm. and show it where it's needed, and not, you know, Expanded. spend your yeah. energy where yeah. it's, but it isn't. Yeah. Question to you is how how has each film that you've done changed you changed you both personally and professionally? You know, I actually think that each film has been coincidentally mirroring things that have been happening in my personal life. Like each film. Um, in the second half of Dharak, essentially my character's entire life changes, um, and by the end of it, she loses two people that are extremely close to her. In the middle of the film, I lost mom, and my whole world changed. Mm. Maybe it's in my head, but it just felt like. And the film ended with a tragedy, and I, I don't know. It felt like it was mirroring what was happening in my life then. When I signed Gunjan. There was all of this rhetoric about nepotism and whether I'm worthy of what I'm getting, what I have to offer. And Gunjan's whole approach was that she'll just put her head down and just keep putting in the work, working hard with sincerity, not looking at the results. And um, and eventually she started feeling like she belonged. And mm -hmm. I felt like my life mirrored those exact beats in that exact time frame. Uh, and the same with the same with like Jerry and Millie. I don't know if like I start looking for these meanings to draw parallels between my life and the characters, but each film has been Mr. and Mrs. Mahi, like I told you. I felt like I found agency right before or some idea or clarity of the kind of woman that I want to be. And I started believing in my own voice right before I started shooting for that film. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it started feeling like a very. I guess they journey. leak into each other, right? I guess so. I also think it's like the power of manifestation, right? And I think when you read this literature again and again, and your job is to believe what you're saying so much, I think somewhere or the other you're attracting this energy. So I started becoming paranoid when I read scripts that end in tragedy, or when I like read like that's from like I need to play a happy character now. I'm I'm scared that. I don't know, it feels like, what was that? Shaka Laka Boom Boom, where he would, <laughs> where he would draw something and it would come to life. I feel like if I read a script, it will be true. So now I'm just like, I'm becoming a superstar in the ending, or I'm going to go to a cruise, I'm going to choose some good scripts. Hi, Hi. Uh, Vidya Sir, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Are you a big fan? Uh, my question is, what has been your favorite character that has inspired you to act in films? Like mine is Poon. <laughs> oh, it has inspired me to act in films. Um, oh my god. Uh, I remember watching Hava Hawaii as a kid, the song. Um, I think, I think the effect that that had on me. I think that song was a big moment for me. And uh, I remember watching My Left Foot mm. and reading about how during the prep of that film, I think he like dislocated his, he fractured his uh, uh, rib cage and he dislocated some other part of his, this thing. And, and I'd grow up hearing stories of mom saying, you know that I Love You song in Mr. India? She uh, shot it with uh, a fever of a hundred and she was dancing somewhere and there was glass on her feet. And I'd like grow up with these stories. So I was like, wow, imagine being so 
dedicated to your art that like you forget everything yeah. and uh, i think stories like this would always inspire me and i think might have also contributed to my slightly unhealthy relationship with my profession because now when like when like i dislocated my shoulder for mahi i was like yes abhi main actor ho abhi main mere bachcho ko bolungi ki pata hai jab mama shoot kar rahi thi to kandha aise nikal ke bahar aa gaya so i am very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know my favorite favorite part of that hawa hawai song is the fact that she was eating it fruits like no she was she improvised that it is happy <laughs> i i've just never forgotten that she was just picking out grapes <laughs> and just eating them as she talked it yeah. was just incredible so she made that up on the spot yeah she improvised that <laughs> guys thank you so much thank and thank you, so you janvi thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.